Hello my friends and welcome. It's Morgana here today with another video. Today's tutorial is going to be this lovely bright green summer pathway lined with fluffy white blossom. This is the outline I've prepared for my painting. I'll pop a downloadable version of this onto my Patreon page uh, with the link below if anybody's interested. This is the reference photo I will be using today. This is actually uh, my own photo, which I have reversed in an editor. Uh, you can see it's facing the other way <laughs> as it was previously. And this is the angle I decided to paint it. So I used Pebio drawing gum to uh, just mark out the white blossoms. Of course, the masking fluid is going to leave us nice clean white paper I did this with this Jacquard uh, medium sized stippling brush and I also used a simple uh, cheap toothbrush and I used this, uh, I dipped this in the masking fluid and I flipped the bristles to create a lovely range of spatters. So everywhere on that paper that you can see a blue mark that's going to be rubbed off and leave some lovely white paper underneath and those are going to be our clusters of white blossoms. Uh, but for now I'm beginning, uh, I'm going to begin with the sky. So I'm working from the top of the paper downwards, uh, getting it nice and wet using my large uh, two inch flat wash brush to just move the paper, sorry, move the water around the paper and just get that nice and wet so it takes the paint beautifully. beginning today with some cerulean blue for the sky. Uh, as our landscape today is rather a busy one, <laughs> lots, of, lots of greenery going on there, I opted to keep the sky a simple one. So as you can see, just using uh, this lovely bright cerulean blue from Windsor & Newton Cotman range of colours and just moving it around the paper, uh, getting a little bit of variation in colour and tone but really that is, that is our sky. That's, uh, that's pretty much done now. <laughs> Sometimes uh, simple really is best. And now I am introducing some green into the paper. This is sap green again from uh, the Windsor and Newton Cotman range. Using this uh, nice flat brush to get decent coverage on the paper preliminarily. You can see I'm just sweeping it in from the side there, not worrying too much about going over the path that I've marked out in pencil. This is going to be rather a sort of scrubby, dusty path anyway. You can see I'm just using the edge of the brush uh, to give it that lovely sort of feathered, textured appearance. And you can see I've brought my green right up to uh, right up to the blue of the sky. I'm just going to allow those colours to diffuse naturally and create a, uh, a soft sort of line between them. I'm just using a texture brush here to just scrub in a little bit of extra green. There's going to be a tree up there. <laughs> uh, so I'm just popping in the foliage right up there uh, where I've already got a little bit of uh, masking fluid for the white blossoms so that's uh, just popping in the uh, little green leaves there as well. So again with the foliage brush and uh, you'll be seeing a lot of this one <laughs> in this video uh, taking some more sap green uh, but a much stronger concentration and just beginning to dab it along the side of the pathway here just to begin differentiating the uh, textures and the placement of where the uh, path is going to be quite flat and green and then along this side here where we're going to have uh, some lovely bursts of foliage coming up alongside. And now doing uh, the same process for the right hand side of the painting using the uh, tree and texture brush 
uh, and just introducing this lovely uh, richer mixture of sap green with only a little water this time and just dabbing that on uh, here and there, hither and yon <laughs> and just uh, really enjoying getting some interesting texture into the beautiful wildflower bank uh, that flanked this particular path. And while that's drying, uh, I'm just going to really simply put in this pathway using uh, a little bit of raw umber and my fan brush, a uh, nice loose mixture of raw umber and just using these uh, horizontal strokes following that line there and just uh, gently scuff in that dusty brown path leading up to our gate. Lovely rustic path, perfect for dog walking or just simply going on a hike or a stroll uh, or a day out with your uh, person or animal of choice. <laughs> Now just introducing a little bit more green, a little bit more foliage alongside that path. As you can see the paper is still quite damp, not as uh, wet as it was to begin with, the paint isn't spreading wildly. Uh, it is sitting pretty much where um, I put it, but the edges are still softening and blending really nicely in with one another. You can see those raggedy edges of the path beginning to disappear and soften into that pale green wash that we put down originally. Uh, which is really, really nice. Just softening down that edge there as well a little bit. Now introducing a little bit of darker green into this uh, into this part of the wash whilst it's still wet. I'm using perillion green here and just dabbing it on, not quite as uh, gleefully <laughs> as I dabbed on the sap green, but just going over and just uh, creating these little pockets of shadow and shade and little darker patches of greenery among this lovely vibrant spring green. Uh, just taking care to keep it around those little bunched up bits of masking fluid. We can see peeping through the paint there. Uh, just bearing in mind where our lovely bright white clusters of blossom are going to be and just working the darker green uh, around those. And now for another colour, I'm popping in uh, some bright clusters of Windsor Lemon Yellow. This is an incredibly bright and vibrant uh, yellow colour. You can see I'm able to dab it on over the greens that we've already got here and it's showing up beautifully. It's a lovely clean uh, transparent watercolour uh, and it's mingling really nicely with the green we've already put on uh, to give this lovely uh, vibrant spring-like colour. I'm really enjoying just uh, the vibrancy here and how these little extra little pockets of yellow they're like little pockets of sunshine <laughs> I think they just uh, really make the greens in this painting sing out and just become that lovely sort of summer vibrant sort of lovely bright fresh uh, colours For those of you who are interested uh, in context, this is of course my own uh, photograph that I'm working from for reference today, rather than 
uh, one that I found online. I took this myself during a walk through the uh, Cookmere River Valley in Seaford quite recently. Uh, it's an astonishingly beautiful place uh, full of natural beauty, uh, lots of lovely walks uh, along the estuary and down to uh, where the sea meets the shore below. This is only one of the many, many, many photos that I took. Uh, hopefully I will be painting some more of them over the uh, weeks to come. But back to the painting now, I am using a liner brush to begin putting in some lovely tufts and clumps of uh, long meadow grass. This is my Pro Art uh, Sword liner brush, so called because of the shape of the tip. Uh, but of course you could use any uh, liner brush or thin brush uh, to do exactly the same thing as I'm doing here just with some quite diluted green paint, again going back to the sap green to begin with and just creating these lovely little loose uh, clusters of lines going along the pathway and just working along, building them up bit by bit varying the uh, height of them and varying the direction a little so it looks uh, lovely and natural and just creating these uh, lovely pockets of long grass Now just introducing a few clusters, little clumps of long grass into this uh, hedgerow bank as well. Here and there, don't want to go too heavy on this, want to mostly keep that long grass uh, on the path side. But um, I do like the appearance of just having these lovely little clumps of long grass bursting through the hedgerow and uh, just popping through in little pockets here and there. As you can see, I've just gone through and used exactly the same technique to uh, produce uh, lines of grass along the left side of the path. Uh, so we've got both sides of the path lined with these lovely uh, little flicks of grass, just using the liner brush, using exactly the same technique as I just showed you. And now using the texture brush again to just ground some of these grasses, uh, just adding a little bit of texture around the roots, around the base to really uh, sort of affix them into the landscape. And here introducing a little more of the raw umber with my texture brush, giving that sort of slightly churned up muddy look among the grasses here. We've got lots of lovely uh, light bright green and yellow colours here so it's uh, important that we introduce as well uh, a few darts, a few shadows into the mixture as well. And I think the raw umber works really well in uh, this kind of colour context. Uh, I think it gives a lovely depth, uh, but it also is a, um, a cool brown. It's a brown with, uh, to me anyway, has a slight greenish hint to it. So I feel that it works really well uh, in this kind of landscape. You can see I'm using it here with my liner brush again to just create the trunk and a few peeping through branches of this uh, elder tree that is springing up uh, from the hedgerow beside the path.
and all I'm doing here is using a little of the darker green, our lovely perillion green, again with the liner brush I'm just going to go through these clusters of grass we've got lining the pathway and of course I've just done the little ones poking up from our hedgerow and just to add um, a few strands of darker green amongst our lovely light green clumps to just give a little bit of extra texture and shadow uh, and body to these lovely uh, long grasses. So now I'm happy with how our greens look, I'm just beginning to rub off the masking fluid that I put on earlier and to reveal just how lovely and bright white these uh, little clusters of uh, blossom are going to be. There we are, that's all the masking fluid gone. You can see there's wonderful sort of random seeming spatters that we got from using the toothbrush and I think using the hot bristle stippling brush. I don't normally use it, but um, in this case it gave these wonderful sort of tufty, sort of fizzy clumps of white here. These white blossoms, which I'm now using, <laughs> pardon my dirty paint cup, but this is my paint water. You can see how green it is uh, from all my mixing, but uh, I'm using this to uh, just dab on gently. You can see that with my texture brush again, and all I'm doing here is just softening down those frizzy white blossoms a little bit uh, by just going over them very loosely and very roughly and just adding a little bit of uh, soft colour over them again to just sort of embed them in the landscape uh, otherwise I find that if you uh, leave the masking fluid just plain on the, in this kind of piece then it looks very very stark, very very bright and like it's just sort of been plonked on the top of all this lovely texture we've worked so hard to create so just going over it with the uh, green paint water and the uh, stippling brush there you can see I just sort of muddied the, uh, <laughs> muddied the whites up a little bit added a little bit of texture here and there and uh, sort of little random sprinkles and it all just looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more full of life. Again adding in these little touches of raw umber because uh, I like just adding in these little hints of brown of course uh, amongst our greens and white blossom we must remember the brown of the earth of the soil and of the sort of lovely uh, twiddy stems that lurk underneath the grasses we've got that lovely hint of play of uh, light and shadow here uh, which I really enjoy in this painting. now just doing exactly the same with these lovely uh, soft white blossoms that line the other side of our path.
And now I'm using my liner brush to fill in a uh, very simple uh, detail of our date. Uh, you can see that I drew it in, in pencil earlier. And now all I'm doing is using my liner brush dipped in a little bit of uh, lamp black paint I'm using today. Uh, thin down with uh, plenty of water and just very carefully with a steady hand <laughs> or at least trying to have a steady hand uh, just painting in the very simple bars of uh, our date. Of course if you uh, don't wish to um, use the uh, use the liner brush and uh, like me have your hand wobbling <laughs> around all over the place uh, there are certainly other ways you can do this. You can use the tip of um, a flat brush uh, and just gently stamp that thin line of the, um, the edge of the flat brush in and just create your lines that way. Uh, or of course you can use a fine liner um, or a pencil uh, or some kind of um, uh, a, uh, a pen and uh, Indian ink for example. Uh, lots of uh, different ways you can go about this, but this uh, this was the way I chose because uh, I had my liner pen <laughs> and I was going to use it. Uh, liner brush, sorry, not liner pen. See, I've got myself confused now talking about pens. There we are, just stuffing a little bit of extra darkness uh, at the foot of that gate there, perhaps where many, many booted feet have walked and started to churn up the earth a little bit, create a little bit of mud few like chalky stones perhaps. You can see part of our gate here going into that lovely mound of green shrubbery we've got there, half hidden by the beautiful bursting summer foliage. And now for a last little touch, a little cluster of uh, birds flying high above our lovely green pastures. This is, uh, of course, an entirely optional uh, touch, but I do uh, always love to pop a bird in <laughs> into my paintings somewhere along the, along the line. And so here are today's very small, very faint birds. Again, using the lamp black, but um, watered down really quite considerably so that it comes out as more of a soft, uh, sort of distant grey colour. So here we are with the finished painting. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed watching this um, and I hope that perhaps uh, as well as enjoying it you perhaps learnt something and felt inspired to uh, paint something similar of your own. Uh, if you'd like to have a go at this uh, to copy my reference photos um, I'll be popping them up on my Patreon page for download uh, available at the lowest tier uh, joining um, price of uh, one single English pound. <laughs> so thank you everybody for watching, thank you for coming along uh, on this little painting journey with me. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Uh, please leave a like or subscribe uh, if you're new here. Uh, and thank you everybody again for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.